This is the Hockerton housing project, embedded into the landscape north of Nottingham. It's the UK's first earth-sheltered, self-sufficient ecological housing development. One element about the houses was that uh, they had to be economic. Um, a, a lot of uh, other earth shelter designs are one-offs designed specifically for one person and uh, you know, usually with a fairly high budget. Um, this had to be fairly low budget, had to be very buildable in the sense that we weren't going to have specialists in to do any of the work, which is why we came to the form of a terrace as opposed to five separate houses. Everything for the houses had to come off the shelf at the builders' merchants. It had to be a very low-tech solution, so it wouldn't be in the realms of the specialist. Um, anybody could go and do it. You could just go down to local builders' merchants, get the materials, get them delivered and get on with it. The houses, with their distinctive 19-metre-long conservatories, are amongst the most energy-efficient purpose-built dwellings in Europe. The principles governing were that um, A, it had to have no heating requirement, um, and once you start off with that um, requirement, then um, the, the, the design, the built form, is going to revolve around that. Um, and you, then you've got to look at the orientation, um, you've got to look at the construction the materials. Um, everything about the house has got to be um, geared towards this lack of heating requirement. The roof, floor and rear wall are all insulated using polystyrene foam that's been blown without the use of CFCs or HFCs. We were also then able to um, moderate the uh, kind of external environment of the houses by um, buffer zones along the front to the conservatories and the earth sheltering on the back. And what that in reality means is that there's no part of the house which will ever see freezing. Um, but also uh, in summer the earth has a cooling effect so it will never overheat. The houses were designed to be heated by body heat from the occupants, waste heat from appliances like fridges, freezers and TV sets, and solar gain from the conservatories. Broadly speaking, it's about a third from the occupants, a third from the appliances, and a third from the sun. On cooler days, a heat recovery unit transfers 80% of the heat in outgoing air to warm the air being taken into the house and a heat pump takes heat from the conservatory and uses it to heat water for baths and washing. We love living in the house. Um, it's very spacious, it's very light, it's very warm when you want it to be warm and cool when you want it to be cool. There's lots of space for the children, there's lots of nice areas that you can relax in and it functions really well, it does what it's supposed to do. Because there's no heating system, there are no automatic controls you find yourself just reacting without having to think about it. It's not a great effort. Um, you notice the temperature going up or down and you act accordingly. You either open skylights or you close doors. But it becomes a very natural way of being in the house. Living at Hockerton involves more than just being in tune with the house. It's about living in harmony with the environment. I think the thing about Hockerton is that the, the lifestyle encompasses so many different aspects of sustainability and so there are lots of things to think about. We have to think about how we manage the 26 acre site in an environmentally friendly way. We have to think about how we grow enough food for the five families. We have to think about what kind of detergents and toiletries we use. From the start, the community has had very little reliance on external services. Once you've done away with um, the need for oil or gas for heating, um, then you start thinking about trying to do away with um, electricity uh, being supplied by uh, outside utilities. And then it follows on that you start looking at water and, and sewage treatment. Drinking water is rainfall collected from the roofs. The underground storage tank holds enough water for up to 250 days. It's filtered, then sterilised with ultraviolet light before use. The reservoir takes water from fields and the road. It's filtered through sand before being used for washing and other domestic or agricultural purposes. Wastewater is treated using reed beds. Bacteria on the roots feed on the effluent material, leaving water that is close to bathing water quality. The purified water flows into the reservoir to maintain supplies even in dry weather. 
the community is also moving towards being self-sufficient in electrical energy. Two small wind turbines have recently been installed in the field to the east of the site, and the roofs now have sets of south-facing photovoltaic panels. The renewable sources are supplying about 70% of the site's electricity needs. But it still relies on fossil fuel to power at least some of its transport needs. One of the um, conditions of the leases on the house is that each family can only have one fossil fuel car. And even then, you question each journey that you make in that fossil fuel car. Car sharing is an established part of Hockerton community life and now they're generating their own electricity, they have been trying out electric and dual fuel vehicles. But most local journeys continue to use pedal power. Even the approach road is part of the project's low energy plan. The plan was always to have um, five dwellings of some sort because that would mean that we wouldn't have to go for an adopted road, um, which would involve street lighting and tarmac and and all the rest of it. So five was always going to be a maximum. We didn't want the, the situation where we had very low impact houses but a high impact road down to them. Although five dwellings remain the limit for the Hockerton site, the project offers many pointers to a more sustainable lifestyle. For other people who may be thinking about the way they live and the kind of changes that they make, um, they can do things on a more limited scale. You know, it doesn't have to be like this big. Um, there are smaller things, smaller changes that people can do that still make a really big difference in terms of the environment um, and the way we live. And, and so, you know, it doesn't have to be this way, this is just one model, but you could take any one aspect and in incorporate that into your lifestyle and, and you would be making a difference. <laughs>